Well, hey everybody, this is Scott Barkley with Proact Traders. I want to welcome you here to a very special uh, webinar on the four things you must know to trade in harmony with the big boys, okay? But uh, because we're recording, we have to do the, uh, the disclaimer. So uh, trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk, may not be suitable for all investors before deciding to trade foreign exchange. You should carefully consider your invest investment objectives, level experience and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should never invest any money you cannot afford to lose. Be aware of all the risk associated with foreign exchange trading and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So uh, you're about to learn a strategy that will allow you to trade with the big boys. Who are the big boys? The big boys are the bankers, okay? So at uh, Product Traders, we call this trading the wide open spaces. So if you could uh, hold your questions until the, until the end of this first part of the presentation, that'll make it go much smoother and much faster, and we will get all your uh, questions answered. So there are many ways to trade the Forex. One is swing trading, one is scalping, another is range trading, another is position trading, and then there's target trading. And that is what we do at Proact Traders, okay? So in this webinar, we're gonna learn how to identify proven areas of low risk and high reward. Learn where to get out and where to get in. We're gonna learn how to limit your risk while finding a high probability opportunity for way more pips than you're currently doing. And we're gonna learn how the dumb money trades and how not to be one of them. So by the way, it works in, stock, in stocks and cryptos also, okay? So let's first of all identify who these big boys are. Big boys move the market, all right? The top 10 overall market share uh, is shown right here, and they control 63% of all the volume in the market, okay? Uh, now, if you add out, uh, if you add out the, uh, the extra um, bankers and uh, the, then, excuse me, the, ne the next five bankers in here, you'll be up over 76%, okay? So let's just use the 76% rate. 76% of everything you see on a chart is done by 15 banks, all right? They move the market, they manipulate the market. You and I could all click a trade at exactly the same time and we won't even put a shadow on a wick. So if we can find their move, then we can find our opportunity, okay? So there are keys to successful target trading. We need to know the trend, assuming there is one. We need to know the fibs. What are the fibs that the big boys are using? We need to know the previous support and resistance levels. And the above are only found on a 240 minute chart. Uh, uh, hold on just a second. Okay. Uh, there are only, this, this information is only found on a 240 minute chart, all right? We have to use strict margin management and uh, we need to trade our trade setup when the opportunity arises only in a wide open space. And this whole thing is about showing you how to find those wide open spaces because that's where the big boys are gonna trade. So what are the four things? We got a, it's called a mnemonic. We've got a little say, saying that helps us remember what we've got to do. TFPD, trade four pips daily. Isn't that what we want to do? Of course that's what we want to do. We want to trade four pips a, daily, okay? So what does that mean? Well, a mnemonic means the first letter stands for something I got to know. T stands for the trend, S stands for the fibs, P stands for PSR or previous support or resistance, and D stands for divergence, and that means that the end is near, and that does not mean that it is here, okay? So, if you knew the targets, you would only make a great risk and reward trade. Unless you know the target, by the way, and the stop loss, you cannot assess true risk and reward. And don't call yourself a trader, you're not trading, you're gambling, okay? You cannot assess real risk and reward if you don't know the exit and you don't know how much money you have to put on uh, in, in terms of risk. So it's just that simple, right? If you knew the targets, you would always trade with at least a one to one or one to two or three um, risk to reward ratio. If you knew the targets, you would never trade right into a target and get stopped out and then blame your broker, 
right? If you knew the tra targets, you would only trade in a wide open space. You would conserve your margin for the most opportune area to trade, just like you do in business, okay? These are business decisions that we make. Unfortunately, traders get into trading and they forget about business. And it doesn't matter whether you're an employee or you own a business. If you're an employee, you work for somebody who, who paid you continuously because you made good business decisions, okay? And that's what trading is. So the big question is, can we know the targets, all right? So what I'm about to show you, some people are going to say, well, that's really basic. And that is exactly the point. There is no rocket science in the Forex. We call it complexicated. The market is complicated, complex, but it's not complicated, okay? Each piece of the Forex market is easily understood when you isolate it and you understand that piece, okay? And every day, the market makers create a chart, we call it the structure. They create a structure in the market that uh, professional traders and other banks all understand. That information is available to every single trader on the planet. What happens though? Retail traders don't look for that. What they're looking for is, where's my moving average crossover, man? That's what I want to trade. And they end up getting whacked, all right? So we're going to walk through uh, how to find those wide open spaces. There are areas of high reward, but they have low risk, risk and it's not as hard as you may think, all right? Yeah, uh, Andrew's pointing out that structure is also the real estate of the day. And the real estate of the day trades uh, uh, changes every single day, all right? So I'm taking a chart here, and the first thing we got to know is we got to know what the trend is. You see, if you don't know what the trend is, then you don't know where to look for the targets. So if we're in a downtrend, we're only gonna be looking for targets to the downside. If we're in an uptrend, we'd only be looking for targets to the upside, okay? So we have to get the trend right first in order to find the targets, okay? So here's a good example of what you need to know. Sustainable trends in the Forex are less than 45 degrees, or let's put it this way, they can't be greater than 45 degrees. So how do I tell what a four, less than 45 degree angle is, okay? Well, on your watch, 10 to two is less than 45 degrees. On your watch, eight to two going up is great, is less than 45 degrees, okay? So if you have a trend that's, that's greater than eight to two in an uptrend, the market makers will adjust it. If you have a trend greater than 10 to four in a downtrend, the market makers will adjust it, okay? So it's very, very important, but it's real easy. If you're looking at a trend, stick your watch up on the chart and say, wow, that's 10 to four. That's a good trend. It's not rocket science, okay? But here's the deal. Your trades are unsustainable moves inside a sustainable trend. Get that. Let me say it again. Your trades are unsustainable moves inside a sustainable trend. All right. So here's a good example here. As you can see, we're going to the downside. And you can see in each and every example here that the move to the downside is unsustainable, so they correct it with a sideways move. The move to the downside is unsustainable, so they pull it back. This move to the downside is unsustainable. A break here, this move is unsustainable. However, this move right here is sustainable. You see that? It's very easy to see. The market does this day in and day out continuously, all the time, all right? So, uh, unsustainable moves inside a sustainable move, right? Now, if you don't know the target, you will give it all back on this pullback right here. So in other words, when the market takes off, hey, here you did okay because it went sideways. You made it through that, okay? But here you took off and you didn't know where this target was, the S2, so second support, and what happened is it retraced 100%, stopped you out, and you went, oh, the doggone broker, he stopped me out again. No, the broker didn't stop you out again. He does not care about your two lot mini, right? He's not looking for that. What happened is the market ran out of sellers, so the market has to go up to find sellers, and they found them, Going back to that, they found sellers here, and that allowed a bunch of, of traders to come into the market. Look at what happened to the move once they got all the traders in. 
a huge move to the downside. You see that? Think of this like this. This is the train that left the station, but they left a bunch of people on the platform. So what do we do? Well, let's stop the train and go back and pick them up. Now, when we pick them all up, now we can go and we can rock and roll. And of course, you've seen that movement over and over again if you've been trading for any time at all, all right? So these are unsustainable moves inside a sustainable trend, all right? So let's take a look at this one right here. We're going to go back with this trend. This is the very start of a downtrend as it breaks out and starts to the downside and see how we find the targets, okay? Now, I have, we use a, a proprietary tool that we invented. It's called HSI, and what it does is it measures Fibonacci sequence, okay? So it never measures the Fibonacci's, okay? But uh, so I'm gonna use that just to keep it nice and clear, but I'm gonna give you a way for you to do it, no matter what you're doing, on what chart you're doing, I'll give you a way as soon as we finish this part. But I want you to see how the market knows where, the, where, the, the, uh, where to trade, okay? So the first thing to understand is, our trades are in these wide open spaces, all right? So this is a wide open space. This is a wide open space. This is where the big boys are going to trade. The big boys don't trade in this consolidation. Big boys don't trade in this consolidation. In fact, they don't call it consolidation. They call it accumulation because they have agreed to take the opposite side of your trade. So if you want to buy up here, there'll be a seller. If you want to sell up here, there'll be a buyer. doesn't matter to them, okay? Why? Because it's like a casino. Ultimately, they're going to win on this deal, all right? So, uh, and there's $400 billion worth of retail money in the market every single day. $400 billion, about four times what the New York stock market is in total. All right, and that's retail money. Guys like you and me and Andrew and David here, people just like us trading $400 billion a day. This is the opportunity right here, okay? So let's see what they did with that. Oh, gee, look at that wide open space. They took it right off, went right down to the target. Now, they attempted to get to the second target here, but what ended up happening? They ran out of sellers. So how do we keep a market moving? We go at A, B, C correction. All professional traders know that an ABC co correction to the upside is a continuation move to the downside, okay? Now, what happens to most traders is they try to sell here. See, dumb money sells at the bottom. Smart money sells at the top. Smart money sells at the top. Dumb money jumps in at the bottom. They get pulled in the pullback. They get caught in the pullback, and they end up getting stopped out, and they go, the broker stopped me out. Well, no, the broker didn't stop you out. In order to go find sellers, they have to give them a discount. That's what a, a pullback is. That's a discount. So they give them a discount, and up they go, and they find plenty of sellers right here. Surprise, surprise, at the top of the trend wall. All right? That's where the, the sellers are congregated. And what do they do with that? They sell it, and they sell it. And where do they go? To the target down here. See? This is where they go. Now, they don't go straight down, all right? This is where the problem with retail traders is. You want that trade to go right in and go instantly right down to here, and two hours later, you click out, and oh, man, isn't that awesome. But you know what? The market isn't on your schedule, right? The market doesn't care if you're in the market at all. Big boys trade 24 hours a day. And when the guy who's trading in the morning is done with his shift, he hands his computer off and the open trades he has to the guy who's coming in on the next shift. He's not sitting there trying to drive this thing to where it's supposed to go and it's only him there. They don't do that, folks. All right? The problem with retail traders is they think, well, you should do that because that's what I got to do. I got a J-O-B. I got to go to work. All right, so I want this thing to finish because I got to go to work. Well, they don't think that way. They don't act like that. They don't care about that sort of stuff, all right? Now, remember I told you that it's, that it's an unsustainable move in a sustainable trend. An unsustainable move in a sustainable trend. Up they go, and they'll continue to do that until they put a wave, a wave uh, pattern in. We're not going to talk about that tonight. We don't want to get that complicated, all right? All right. So, and now in a live environment, we would also have Fibonacci's on here. We'd have PSR, previous supported resistance on here, defining these wide open, open spaces. So it would look like this in a real chart.
okay? So uh, in fact, this is our real estate of the month chart, okay? We started this trade back in, uh, you know, several weeks ago, and we started it up here at well, 113.25, right here, after the break and the pullback, okay? Because the pullback, by the way, is our friend. We're not dumb money, we don't sell at the bottom and live through the pullback, we sell at the top. All right. So they turned up here. Here's the first wide open space. Here's the second wide open space. They run out of sellers. Up they go to the top of the channel, turn into the downside. Now, this target is out because it's already been hit. So the, now the new wide open space is there. And then there's another one down here. Can everybody see why we traded this? And what are we trading? We're trading in wide open spaces where we have minimal risk and great reward. That's the key to trading, folks, okay? But the thing is you have to put it on the chart so you see where these areas are because, as you can see, if 73 and 74% of everything that's done on the chart is done by a big boy, you can see what they did. 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 This is what they did with this chart. All right, and they do it every day, and this is where they talk to each other. They can't call each other up. You can't, HSBC can't call Bank of America up and say, hey, uh, Bank of America, you know, we're doing a dollar, a dollar yen trade to the downside. We're shorting it. We'd sure like you to help us get down there. We're looking for a target of 11020. They can't do that. You know why? That's called price fixing, and you go to jail for price fixing. So how do they do it? How do they get everybody in line to make the same move? They do it on the charts. They create a wide open space that all professional traders know how to find. And then when they enter that area, the money comes in to make that trade. And you can easily see that. Look at it right here. See this? Our signal for money coming in is an arrow and a painted candle. Where does it come in? At the very top where smart money sells. Remember, dumb money sells at the bottom, lives to the retracement. Dumb money sells at the bottom, lives to the retracement. Smart money sells at the top. Smart money sells at the top. And smart money sells on any break of a uh, pattern, I mean, of a uh, barrier, as long as they know where the targets are. All, right? all professional traders are target traders, folks. They trade to a target. Some are longer term. Some trade to a target that's two months out. Right? Some trade to a target that's a day out. Some trade to a target that's uh, two, two to four hours out. Okay? But the dumb money, I mean, the smart money is not scalping five, eight, ten pips. You know why? Because they have rules. And their rules keep them from trading that because they don't trade with stops. They cannot put millions of dollars at risk without a stop unless they have uh, rules and rules tell them where they can trade and how much money they have to have. And by the way, the minimum is 55 pips. All right. All right. So uh, you can see, very simple. This is what they're doing. They're doing wide open spaces. All right. So your trades are those wide open spaces, but you don't trade into a target. Okay. You make that trade. You make that trade. Okay. You make this trade. And you see the bottom right here. The charts will tell you where the bottom is. Look at the reaction off the bottom. They exited their trades there and up they go straight up in the air right there because they exited those trades to the downside. All right, so here's an up move, all right? Gonna start over here, all right? Start of a new trend, got the same target tool on there. It finds these wide open spaces. So you can see them. These are the targets, all right, going up. We're gonna go all the way up to the 140 up here, all right? So you can see them, all right? So what did they do, all right? Uh, my trades are unsustainable moves in a sustainable trend. There's the first trade. There's the second trade. There's a third trade. Now, you notice that the targets continue to get a little bigger, a little wider, a little bigger, which means that it takes longer to get there. You notice here, right here, where there's no, no nothing ha happening, bam, they just go and run, run through those targets like crazy. And then we start to get a little wider space up here. All right, so this space gives us, takes them a little longer. Here we got a really long space. It's going to take them, what? Oh, these are, I want a uh, 240 candle. So this is probably a two-day trade up to there. You see that? All right, then here's the top. What? A huge trade up here. This trade is uh, 136.62 to 143, okay? It's a, uh, you know, well, how big is that? Uh, for 700 pips right there, folks. That's a 700 pip trade, all right? Professional traders make that trade. Dumb money gets five to 10 pips out of that. 
And they go, I can't get in, man. Oh, oh there, I'm okay, I'm going to get in. And then they, then they live to the pullback or they get stopped out. And they go, the doggone broker stopped me out again. No, the broker didn't stop you out. You're trading in the wrong place. All right, that's what's happening, All right? So the pullback is your friend, by the way. For retail traders, the pullback is your enemy until you learn not to trade like the dumb money. Once you learn not to trade like the dumb money, the pullback becomes my friend. I'll prove it to you in just a minute when we go into a live chart. Now, the bigger the wide open space, the more time it usually takes to make that trade, okay? Now, that shouldn't shock you because the big boys don't care. If it's 700 pips up there and they're going to go get 700 pips, they're going to go get them, all right? What do we do? Oh, well, you know, I've got to go to work in an hour. I'll just grab these seven pips, man, and I'm good. Why did you trade that seven pips, man? Because I just wanted to push the button. <laughs> Retail traders want to push the button. All right, why? I need an endorphin high today. Have you figured out the target? No, I don't know where the target is. I just got a new of an average crossover. I'm in, man. How much did you risk? I'm all in. Uh, stupid, silly stuff like that. All right. So here's a FedEx logo, right? Most of us have seen a FedEx logo, okay? But did you know there's an arrow in it? It's right in the middle between the E and the X, okay? See, so the rest of the world sees the Fed X, okay? But we see the arrow, all right? And that's an illustration of what a trade setup is. In the chaos of all those candles, which everybody thinks are random and they're not, in the chaos of all that, a trade setup to us is that arrow that's always been in front of that E and, and in between that E and X, all right? One of our traders actually went to their, um, a uh, FedEx person who delivers them every day and went out there and said, hey, man, have you ever seen the uh, arrow in your FedEx logo? He goes, no, what are you talking about? And when, when they showed it to him, she showed it to him, she showed it to him, he freaked out. How many FedEx logos does he look at in a day? A thousand? He had never seen it. After looking at a thousand FedEx logos a day, never seen the arrow. Here's the thing. Once you've shown the arrow, you never don't see it again, right? And that's kind of what we're trying to do here is we're trying here today to show you where a wide open space is and how to find it. All right. Now, from then on, you shouldn't ever not see a wide open space if you're doing the work. All right. So uh, a, a, a trade set up to us looks like this. We are looking for momentum. It's this arrow and painted candle or this white dot. It's, they're all happening behind the scenes and they are, we're watching for the money coming in. And when the money comes in, it turns the candle bright red. Uh, and if it's sustainable, it stays bright red, like a neon color, all right? But it starts with an arrow and painted candle. If the big boys come in, the addition of a white dot in this example means that a big boy entered a bunch of money. And you need to understand that the average big boy is trading 20,000 standard lots. So a big boy entered, right? And they don't enter unless there's at least a 55 pip target, all right? Why 55 pips is part of a Fibonacci sequence. That's why, all right? So they can't trade without that 55 pip uh, wide open space, all right? So that's what it looks like to us. So let me give you that same movement over here, all right? Can you see this? Would you have the confidence to trade and stay into the targets if you knew this was the target and your signal was here and you had that much room to the bottom? Would you have the confidence to do that? All right, see that? All right, what about here? Would you have the confidence when you see that white dot and the arrow and painted candle? That's our signal, you'll have a different one, okay? When you see that at the top, trying to go to the next target, would you have the confidence to stay in for that one, okay? So uh, there you go. Uh, how about this one? A big, big move. Remember, they get bigger as we go along. That's because the Fibonacci sequence works that way. And you see the arrow and painted candle right there. If you knew that, then you got two more right here. Well, why? look at the space I got still left. Could I make those two trades? Yes, I could. See, because I know where the targets are, I can make great risk and reward trades. All right. That's what I can do. All right. Now, would you know not to trade this signal right here? All right, right here, I get a signal. Well, there's my target. I don't have any room right there. I can't make that trade. Here's another one down here. Here's one right there. Can I make this trade right here? I can't make that trade because I know where the target is. So I don't make the trade because it's too dangerous right there. That's what happens, all right? So 
you can, the targets are found, are easily found. I'm going to give you another way to show you in just a second here, okay? So unless you're a pro-app trader, uh, target, uh, target trader and a subscriber, you don't have that cool tool, tool that I just used, all right? Uh, we invented that tool. We're the only people in the world that have it. Uh, that's called HSI. We have it. Nobody else has it. So it finds the targets automatically for us, okay? But uh, here's how you can do it using any chart, all right? They're called PSRs. PSRs are previous support and resistance, okay? Now, support in an uptrend in the past always equals future resistance in that same price area. Resistance in a downtrend in the past always equals future support in the same price area. And this is where it gets kind of crazy because you've got to think a little dyslexic. I'm looking for support. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I'm going down. I'm looking for where my support is. Where do I go find that support? I go in the past and find resistance. And you go, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, all right? If I'm looking for support, don't I look for support in the past? The answer is no, you don't. You go in the past and you look for resistance because resistance in the past becomes support in the future. Vice versa, uh, support in the past becomes resistance in the future. All right. So how do we know them? What is support? Well, fortunately, Tom DeMarc defined that for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Tom DeMarc defined it for us. By the way, he's a famous trader, if you don't know who he is. All right. He defined it as this. You have one candle priced all the way down to this point. Let me change the color here so you can see that easily. Price down to here, okay? And we have two prices, two candles on the, on the left, on the right, and two candles on the left. Their lows are higher than this. In the case of twins, Sisters, railroad tracks, whatever you call them, the twins act as one candle, right? So that is support right there. Has to have two to the left and two to the right. What if you only have one to the left and two to the right? It's not support. It looks pretty, but it isn't support, all right? So that's support. So what is resistance? Well, resistance is just the opposite, okay? In resistance, we have one candle sticking up with two to the left and two to the right. And again, in case of twins or sisters or railroad tracks, all right? Twins act as one candle. That's what they act as. All right? So that's how you find them in the past. So we're going to go do that right now. All right? So why will this work with scary, scary accuracy? All right? <clears throat> Jesse Livermore, a very, very famous trader, stated the following. The game does not change, and neither does human nature. Bankers are mathematicians, and they trade the math. They also telegraph their intentions, which is why the market will consistently do similar things. It's not rocket science. It is not rocket science. It is complex, but it is not complicated. So we're going to tackle one piece of the puzzle. One. There are multiples, folks, but we're going to tackle one piece that when you walk out of here tonight, you're going to have a tool that allows you to identify wide open spaces in your charts. All right? So we're going to do it live, right? Because after all, I may have just cherry picked a couple of those best ones. Maybe I'm just really lucky. Okay. So, um, hold on. Let me go to the charts here. All right. So what I've done ahead of time is I've picked out six charts so you can see them. All I've done here, I'll just start over here in the Aussie dollar. The only thing I've done here is I've just, I've taken a mov movement right here. See this movement right here going up. I've taken this movement to show you how this works, okay? So I'm gonna go back in the past and I'm gonna pretend that this hasn't started yet. I'm looking at live charts and where I made the turn and I'm going up. How do I figure out where this is gonna go? Well, remember, I'm looking in this case going up, I'm looking for my resistance. Therefore, I must go in the past and find my support in that same area. So I'm going back in time, I'm going back in time. All right, I'm on a 240 chart and I find a up movement in that same price area, okay? So I'm gonna start here, okay? Now remember how I do this, all right? I take every high, okay? If I have a new high here, right? See, so this is a new high. I, take, I walk it back until I find support. One candle sticking down with two to the left and two to the right, okay? This does not make another high, okay? Okay, but uh, this one does. I go up here. Here's it is right there. I walk this back. I'm looking for two to the left and two to the right. There's one right there. All right, there's another one right here that goes to here. There's another one right here that goes to here. And there's another one right here that goes to here. Big bunch of them right there. Let me grab those while I can. All right, so I'm going to pop, uh, pop this one right here. Pop this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
right. Now, so, uh, all the way up here, we've got another one here. Get this one right here uh, automatically because it grabbed from all those other ones here. And I'm gonna, here's a new high here. I go back and find to the left and to the right. It's uh, not there, it's all the way down here. So there it is, okay? To the left and to the right. So I'll grab that one, all right? Then we'll go back and we'll see what did the market do with this map? This is map, that's all it is, folks. This is previous support, which will become future resistance. So I'm gonna scroll back to this area where we all started here, all right? All right, and here we go, all right? So here we are, and now, here's what I know. I know that I can trade this area right there, I can trade this area right here, and I do not wanna miss this big area up here. I know those three are mine. I won't be able to trade in this area unless they take, the pro, take them out and then do a pullback. I will be able to trade if they take them out, but other than that. So I know there are three trades here before it ever starts, and this is how you do it, folks. There's no rocket science, this is, this is it. All right, so up where, are we gonna go up? Are we gonna go up? Are we gonna go up? Are we gonna, oh man, where did that go? Right to the target, dang. All right, next target, I can trade this, 36 to 93. I got almost uh, 50 pips in there. I can make that trade, all right? I get a pullback. Oh, the pullback is my friend. Remember, this guy is now gone, okay? I'm just gonna dash him, he's gone, right there. My new target, I can, I can assess risk and reward. Here's how I do it. There's my reward right there. I'm gonna enter right here. What's my risk? The last uh, support of resistance right there. So there's my risk, there's my reward. I can make that trade because I can identify true support and I can identify a true, true target and I can identify my risk right there. So I can make that trade because the risk is less than the reward. And what do they do? Right up to it. All right. Now, I know I can't trade in here. The only way I can trade is if a big boy takes it out. But I could place an entry order above 74.25 for 74.90 since there's almost 70 pips there. I could place an entry order in there just in case they blow and go. And what do they do? They blow and go. Go. Right there. All right. So all these are now gone. What do I want? Give me a pullback. Please give me a pullback. All right. And we've got a little dinky one there. That's all, not much. It's really what we call a pole, right? And we're looking for our target is up here at 77.29. And in this space right in here, it's 75.33 to 77.29. There's 200 pips there, folks. 200 pips, all right? And what do they do with it? To the pit, all right? Now, look, because it's a big area, it's gonna take longer than two hours. Right, but that's not a problem because if I enter the trade down in here, wherever I enter this trade down in here on that pullback, all right, my stop stays below here, and there's my target, no problem. As long as I'm not in a big hurry to move my stop, which is something that we teach everybody, just leave it right there. I'll stay into this move. Once I get up in here, I'll move my stop right underneath here, and I'll hold for that target right there, all right, and that gives me opportunities to do what we call press our winners without exception, all right. So there's one, I'm gonna do six of them here. So you see how that works. Let me go down to, uh, <coughs> let me do the uh, Aussie, uh, New Zealand here, all right? So I got a down move here. So we just did an uptrend, so I'm gonna do a down move here. I'm gonna go back in the past and you can see this down move, I got, I'm, I'm looking for my support here in a down move. So what do I gotta do? I gotta go back in the past and find my resistance in the same area. Well, I don't have to go very fa far back here where I find a movement that went right in here. You see, bankers, always do what they've always done, all right? So when they're gonna trade over here, they look over here and say, what do we do over here? Okay, I see it, all right, that's what we're gonna do, all right? So remember, how you are do this is you walk the currency back. You find a low and you walk it back, and when you get here, you go find, where is there two to the left and two to the right? There's one right there, okay? All right, then there's none up in here because the next one is above here, all right? So uh, this doesn't make a lower, this doesn't make a low here. So I can't take any in here, but this makes a low right there. And so there I go back, I'm looking for two to the left and two to the right, there's one right there. This makes a low right there. So I go for two to the left, two to the right, got one right there. And this makes a low right there, got one right there. All right, so there's, there's four. All right. How hard was that? Gee, that was really hard, Scott. It took you about uh, maybe 25 seconds. I could actually do it faster if I wasn't talking. All right. So now I know where the market is going to try to go. And when it makes a turn over here, right here, when it makes this turn, all right, I know where I'm going to try to go. All right. So the first target is here. I know where I can trade. I can trade here. I can trade. I don't want to miss this big opportunity here. I can trade here. I cannot trade here. 
unless they take it out and pop back up and I can trade here, all right? So I got one, two, three, four possibilities here and I know them before it happens, all right? That's it. I know it all before it happens. That's one of the keys. You can't be a target trader unless you know where they're trying to go before it happens because you have to make a decision to risk money. That means you have to know where the target is. You have to know where the stop loss is uh, in order to, to, uh, to assess risk and reward. If you don't have those numbers, you can't trade. You're not trading, you're gambling. Let's put it that way, all right? So this is my first opportunity. Where did they go? Bang, right down to it, okay? Gee, my knee, all right, so that one's gone, all right? Now, if I get a pullback, which would be great here, get a pullback would be awesome. A pullback would give me, my next target is here, but it would give me extra pips, all right? So there's a little pullback right there. When I get my signal, which, which down on a 10 minute chart, you see the money came in right there? Down on a 10 minute chart, that would be an arrow and a painted candle. That would be my signal to go. And I'm going all the way down to here. Wow, let's see how they do it. Big problem here, okay? So they made a move and were not successful. So what happened? They ran out of sellers, all right? So what did they do? They went back on you, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, thanks, JR, all right? So what did they do? They went back up to find some sellers. You know what else they did? They went back up to get a 45 degree angle on it. <laughs> That's another thing they did, all right? So they went back up here and you could actually, we can, we can show you where they went. Well, I'll do it. They went to a FIB. We're not gonna talk about FIBs tonight because it would take us all night to add all this stuff. But okay, so they went back up here and they turned, they had a move to the top to set the top and they turned actually at the 50% FIB. That's it, all right? So now, they're headed to the downside, all right? We've had our, we've had our uh, uh, ABC retracement. Don't forget, this is how they tell everybody, we're not going up, boys. We're not going up. We're not going up, but the candles are going up, but we're not going up. We're going up to find sellers so that we can make this trade to the downside. You see that? That's what they're doing, all right? So up they go. You need to understand how, why the market does what it is, all right? Now I know my target's down here, so now they just added 100 pips to this trade to the downside. What do they do? Bam, as soon as they got sellers in, because uh, everybody saw the ABC correction. Everybody knew what to do. This is what is called a close and reverse, all right? Close means they close the buy because they made this move so everybody knew what to do and they reversed, went into a sell. And there it is. And look at that huge trade right there. Daggone that guy, Scott. He's so lucky, man. Right down to the pip, pulled back up. See that? Okay, ran out of sellers, okay? Why? That's an unsustainable move, all right? An unsustainable move inside a, trend, a sustainable trend, all right? An unsustainable move inside a trend. The pullback is, is not only is it uh, likely, it's you should plan on it. If you're not planning on the pullback, you're not paying attention to the market because the market pulls back overwhelmingly. In fact, it pulls back about 90% of the time, right? So now my new target when I get the pullback here is down to here. All right, and then there's another one below here. Here's my two trades, but it has now turned into three trades. You see that? I now get trade one, two, and three, all right? So remember, this is not, all I'm doing is putting lines on this chart, folks. You know, everybody goes, yeah, but man, you got too many lines in your charts. Oh yeah, but look what happens when you know where the lines are. You know exactly where to trade to. See that? Gee, I knew that ahead of time. Wow, right down to it. If I break here, okay, gonna be a problem. They went ahead and did it. They broke the trend. Can you see that? Why? Because the trend wasn't actually there. They adjusted the trend down to here. How do I know that? I'll tell you why. Because they proved the heart line. We have a beginner's vi uh, video on this on our website on how to find trends correctly. And uh, that's how they did it. So they were able to do that. You see what they did here? Trade the wide open space trade the wide open space, trade the wide open space again, trade the wide open space again, trade the wide open space again. Wow, I wonder what they're doing. They're trading the wide open space. That's where the big boys are gonna trade. Where's the dumb money trading? In this stuff right here. Dang, the broker stopped me out again. Oh man, he hit me again. Oh, God, I hate that broker. I need to change broker. You don't need to change brokers, you need to learn how the market moves, all right? So there we go, let's do another one here. All right, so this is, uh, let's do the dollar. We're gonna do three majors and three exotics here. 
All right, so I'm going back in here, and here I have a nice up move here, all right? So can I figure out how they traded this? Sure. All I got to do is I'm an up move, so I'm looking for my resistance. That means I go back in the past and find my support. So here's the support. Here's an up move in the very same price area. So what am I looking for? Remember how you do this. You start with a high, all right, and you take it back and find – to the left and to the right. It's all the way down here, which is, is um, uh, we've already had a move to the upside. So I won't need that one. But here's another one right here. This one goes back to here, all the way back to there, okay? Here's a new high right there. That one goes back to here. This one right here goes back to here. This one right here goes back to here, all right? So that's it right there. So I gotta get those four right there. Let me pop them on. One, two, three, four. So what do I know? Here's what I know. When I make the turn to the upside, all right, uh, come on, baby, right here, okay? When I make this turn to the upside, I, I know exactly where my trades are. I know the wide open space is here. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss this. I don't want any part of this right here, and I want this. Yeah. And what happens to a lot of traders is they finally go, okay, it's going up, man. And they trade right into this mess here and they get whacked and they wonder what happened. Well, you got, you got too many barriers to go in, folks. That's what's happening here. All right. So uh, up we go. There's the first target. When I get the second one, where do they go? Right up to it. Gee, my knee. How much of a ball? You had almost no pullback here and, you know, maybe 30 pips here. And how big was that? 108.60 to 110.62. 200 pips right there. That's a 200 pip trade that a professional trader will get. What will a retail trader get? Five to eight pips. The average retail trader only gets five to eight pips, folks. That's it. I used to be a consultant for FXDD, and I was in the pits one day, and I said, how much are these retailers getting? What are the average trade? They said five to eight pips. That's the average winning trade. And at the time, FXDD was the second largest broker in the United States. Uh, five to eight pips is what they're getting. What are the professional getting? 200, all right? I need a pullback. All right? Give me a pullback. All right? Do, uh, we're doing a pull. There's the pullback. That gives me the opportunity. There's a green arrow. All right, down on a 10-minute chart, that'll be an arrow and a painted candle, which would be my signal to go ahead in and where to go. To the pip. That got it. That guy is so lucky. Right to that line. Remember, I don't want any part of this up here. Yeah, the only way they're going to do this is to take it out with a one big boy has to go, okay, I'll take it out. And he puts the money in to take it. But I would put an entry order right up here for that target. All right. That's what I would do. All right. Well, I went on that trade. I don't know. But statistically, I will. If I trade 300 of them, I'll win on 260. All right. Let's see what they do. Boom. They took them all out. See that? All of them are gone now. They went to each one of them, took it out. Now, my new target is up here. All right. A pullback. See that pullback? See the money coming in right there? Where are we going? All to the top. Ooh, they ran out of buyers. The pullback is my friend. All right, this gives me another opportunity to add to this position for the turn to the upside. Oh, see how they did it? All right, boys, we're going up. How do we know that? Because we've got to go do an A, B, C correction. Oh, we're going up. Okay, I got it. That's what they're doing. All right. And they actually get it all the way over here. Right there. I moved my stop tight right here and got stopped out right there. Gee, uh, this is the dollar yen. This is our real estate of the day trade. I'm going to just pop over to a real chart where I only have more than, I got everything on this chart over here. Uh, this is a trade we identified. Uh, I showed you that earlier. Uh, we identified at the beginning of the month. We're in this trade for two or 300 pips right now. Yes, it takes longer than two hours. All right? And we uh, traded it at 113.25, which was after this pullback, we break into here, and the ABC pullback right there. We traded at 130, 132.25, uh, 113.25, unsustainable trend, uh, move, pullback. Unsustainable move, pullback. Unsustainable move, pullback. What's next? Can everybody see that? Trade one. Trade two, trade three, because in this case, I have PSRs on here, I have an HSI target on here, and I got the uh, I got a FIBS on here, all right? And you see the market knows where those FIBS are, you know where that FIB is, it's gonna know where that FIB is, it's gonna know where that FIB is, all right? I know exactly where it is. And what do people say? Man, you got too many lines in your charts here, but these lines define the wide open space, the wide open space, the wide open space, the wide open space. The wide open space. 
the ones to come, wide open space, wide open space. You see that? I know where they are. I know what to do here. I know how to assess risk and reward. If I make the trade right here, my stop's going to be above here. I have that much to risk for that right there. Can I make that trade? Of course I can because the risk for the reward makes sense. All right? When I'm the retail traders, they're trading 30, 40 pips to make five to eight. Idiotic. Breaks every rule in the book. But that's why they call us the dumb money. Bankers call us the dumb money because we do stupid stuff like that, right? Now, I'm not calling you the dumb money. I'm telling you what they do. And why do they do that? Because we do stuff like that, right? Well, we don't. Proact traders doesn't. But retail traders, as a general rule, will do that. All right, so maybe I got lucky. Let's try uh, a couple of exotics. I got three exotics I did the same thing for. All right, so uh, let's start over here in the Pound New Zealand. All right, big rocker. Uh, one of our traders, Andrew, is here tonight. Uh, he's here, and uh, Andrew won the Forex Roll Contest, and he did it primarily trading this uh, pound New Zealand. So you can see I have a nice big move to the upside here, as you can see. All right, so what do I need? I'm going up. I'm looking for my resistance. That means i got to go in the past and find my support. So I go back in the past, and I've already marked this off so I can find it, just to make it easier and quicker for us to, to do this. All right. So here's an uptrend in that same area. Remember, whatever they did in this area is what they're going to try to do in that other area. Okay. So I'm looking for support. How do I do this? I take every high and walk it back until I can find to the left and to the right. To the left and to the right. Okay. Right here. To the left and to the right. To the left and to the right. Another high here. To the left and to the right. To the left and to the right. No highs on here. Okay. And so I'm going to get those before I move on. I got one right there, 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 one right there. Okay, so you see tough stuff down in here to trade. Right? And that's one of the reasons you watch them and go, why do they have so much trouble there? Because they have a lot of barriers there, that's why. All right, over to this area right over here. Here's the first big major move out right here. I moved that one back to here and find to the left and to the right. Here we go, down to here, there you go. Uh, here was the next one, goes back to here. Uh, this one goes, ooh, that goes all the way back to there. Right? And this one right here goes to the left and to the right, right there. So I gotta get those four also. Uh, so pop them on here. This is not rocket science, as you can see. Uh, there we go. Now, when I get over to this area right over in here, making the turn to the upside. Okay, you notice here, what happens? Before they ever got to that spot, they took all these targets out. Can anybody see that? On this move up here, see how they took them out? Bam, 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 bam. This is why they were having trouble in here. They had too many barriers, so they had to take them out one at a time. Bang, 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 bang. All right, and there you go. All right, so now we can pull back, back over here. Now we can find some buyers. All right, so let's see. There we go. So now remember, all of these are gone right here. Every one of these is gone except for this one right up here. So my actual target, because all of these were taken off, uh, were taken out over here, my target is there. That's my first target here. Do I want to miss that? I do not want to miss that in a heartbeat. I do not want to miss that. 91 to 46. I got 50 pips there. I can make that trade right there. See that? All right. So let's see what they do. All right. And see, I did all of them back out. They're already gone anyway. Now I got a pullback. So remember, this pullback is my friend. It's going to allow me to go to the upside. Okay, so anywhere in here, I'm starting to look for a buy. It's actually going to be on a fib. We won't do that tonight, but we're looking for that. And where are they going to go? They're going sideways. There's a lot of barriers here that slow it down. When you see when you're in this, this is this is when the market's having trouble. It's consolidating. Why is it consolidating? There's too many barriers. There's no wide open space. They can't break it. They keep trying to break it out, but they can't. But one of these is going to go out. And when it does, look out, right? So here we go. Are they going to make it on this one right here? There we go. And look, it didn't, didn't take them long to get right up there. They missed it on the first go around, came back down, and caught it right there. There we go. Now it's out, right? So take that out, all right? Now, what do I want? I want a pullback, all right? I want a pullback. There it is. Give me that pullback. Baby, baby, come to papa. Close and reverse to the upside. There's my target, 85.91. I'm at 8,000 here. That's a 591 pip move, folks. It's going to take it a week, 
or maybe three days to do it. So how do they do it? What do they do? Bam, right there. Look at that. Gee, dad, God, that Scott, he's so doggone lucky, right? So in this last little push here, those are two, two four-minute, four-hour candles. It took only eight hours to do that 500 pips, folks, right there. Look at that. Man. All right, and you could have made that because you already knew where it was going. You knew it before they ever had ever happened. All right, then what happened? Up to they go to the pip and take it out right there. Dad, got it. That's God. He's so lucky again. All right, let's try the New Zealand yen. Okay, this is not a rocker. Pound New Zealand is. This is not a rocker. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to do this down move right in here. See that? All right. So what are we going to do? We're going to go back. I'm look going down. I'm looking for my support. That means I got to go back in the same price area and find what did they do when they were here? I go find resistance, okay? So I'm going back in the past and here it is. There's a move right here, the whole way down, all right? So I'm looking for resistance, all right? So how do I do that? I go and find a bottom, all right, a, a, a low and take it back up if I can find two to the left. See here, there's one candle here, but the second candle is above it. So that is not it, all right? This one's all the way up in here, but that's the top. Okay, so we won't, we won't grab that one. All right, so I'm looking for lows. None of these make a low. Here's the first low right here. And to get to the left, I got to go right to there. There's one, all right? Now, here's the next one right there, to the left and to the right. Take this one back up. Two candles there, two candles there. There's one right there. All right, new low right in here. Two candles left, two candles right. New low right in here. Two candles to the left and two candles to the right, okay? None of these make another low till we get over to here. So let me grab these while I'm here. Gee, this is rocket science. It took so long to do that. Oh my gosh, God. It took like, uh, you know, all of 25 seconds. All right. And right there. All right. So now I'm going to do this one right here. All right. So we're taking, remember, all the lows, find the lows and walk it back. See if you can find to the left and to the right. Right here. To the left and to the right. Here's another one right here. To the left and to the right, to the left and to the right. None of these make it until we get here. Run that one back, to the left, to the right, all the way back up to there before we get it. Here's another low right there. Goes to there, to the left and to the right. And this one right here goes all the way back to here. There we go. All right, so let me get those. And I now know by putting them on, I know where the wide open spaces are which is the key to target trading. Because unless I know where they are, I don't know where the big boys are gonna trade, number one. Number two, I don't know the areas where I should not put on a trade. I should put on a trade here. I should do nothing in here, nothing in here, all right? I don't wanna trade this little area right here, but I don't wanna miss that area. See, I, this is what I know by doing this. I know where I can trade and where I can't. I know where the biggest opportunity for the least amount of risk is at all times. All right, and this is just one way to do it, folks. So we're gonna go up here, all the way up here. Not, these don't mean anything in the uptrend. They don't mean a squat, all right? They mean something when they make the turn up here to the downside. So let's find it over here. Where are you? Here we go. Okay, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna trade this area right here. Here's what I know right now. Before I even start this move, there is a 48 to 75. That's too dicey to trade right there. But I can trade that. It's only 22 pips, all right? That's I can trade, that I can trade. 65 to 90, there's 30 pips here. That's a little dicey, so I'll leave these alone, but I don't want to miss that, and you can have all of that you want. I'll give all the retail traders all of that that they want. You can have it, all right? So let's see what happens, all right? So there we go, right down to it. See that, man, and then they pulled back up. Why? Because they need to find sellers. They ran out of sellers there, so they're gonna find sellers with this pullback, and now this is gone, and this is gone. These two targets are no longer here. Right? There are barriers, but they're no longer targets. This is the new target. That's my opportunity right there. Okay, before it was just this little bit. Now it's almost doubled in size. All right, that's what it's done. All right, so let's see what they do with that. Oh, man, doggone it. He went right down to it. All right, gee, my knee. All right, next one. All right, pull back. Why? Okay, we ran out of sellers. We've got to go back up. My, my trades are unsustainable moves inside a sustainable move. Unsustainable true moves inside of a sustainable one. So what are they doing here? Okay, well, it's pretty easy. They're setting a top and a bottom. See that? All right, so there we go. There we go. All right, so now we got a little trend on here. Let's just see how they work. All right, now that we got to see how it worked, how they did it. All right, 45 degrees. That's 10 to 4. No problem on my watch. 
right, where am I going? All right, this, is, uh, this has been taken out. So my new target, my new target is not this one. It's down here. So this becomes a two-part trade. My first trade is here, and my second trade is here. What we call a snowman. We love snowman because we press our winners without exceptions in these wide open spaces, all right? So uh, let's see what they do. Bam, and this is the signal we're gonna go all the way. Look at that, bam. Now they take all, the, all these out at one time, see that? Now if you're in the trade here, you just hold. This is why you never limit. We never limit on a trade, we move our stop, all right? So that we catch all that extra stuff. We know it's there ahead of time. Now, we need a pullback or a pull, all right? That's, there it is, a open and close right here. That's the signal, that's the telegraph to every professional trader in the world. Boys, we're gonna make it to these targets. All you gotta do is join us, all right? So that's what's gonna happen here. And what are they gonna do? They have to pull back first, all right? Because they're out of sellers. But they've already sent the message, and what do we got here? An A, B, C, all right? So bear flag to the downside, there we go, very easy to see. And what are we gonna do? Well, let's just see, ooh, a big pullback, all right? And they pulled all the way back here. Now see, we won't be in this trade because we have violated this trend. So we're on the sidelines going, what are they doing? What are they doing, all right? Once they make the turn, look at how far they go on that first run, just screaming right down because these targets aren't here. They don't, they don't, they don't exist anymore, all right? They're gone. That's why they screamed right down and where they go to the pit, to that target. Now remember, I'll tell you, you can have all that. I'm gonna take the rest down here. That's it, all right? So look at, somebody got that. And now I'm looking for this move. I need a pullback. Give me a pullback as my friend. And there we go, to the pit down in there, all right? A little bit more to go, pull back up. Why? Not, we got, we're out of sellers, all right? All right, so now this is a whole move. Wait, once we get this pullback all the way back up here, but it's kind of the nature of this currency, by the way. All right? So all these targets are gone. This is my next target all the way down there. That's where it is. All right, so what are they going to do? There's the first one. Boom. See how they did that? Why? Because there's nothing to stop it. These were all taken out in here. Okay. This one was taken out in here. Okay. So what do they do? They traded the whole way to the target. Right. Gee, my knee, how far is it? Well, that's 79.50 to 76.07. Uh, 350 pips, that's all, folks. And they did it all at one time. Why? Because that's where the wide open space was. Who did this? Who printed those candles? Uh, those 15 bankers and all the people who figured it out and joined them. That's who did it. One last one, then we'll open it up for, for uh, uh, questions. All right, last one, headed to the upside. I'm looking for resistance because I'm going up, right? I go back in the past, find a, uh, a up move in that same price area, right? right? And I simply take, remember how you do this, find a high, take it back. Find the two to the left and two to the right. Take a high, there's one right there, right, right there. Where did that go? Right to, all the way there. This, there's no two to the left and two to the right until I get here. Here's another high here. This one goes all the way down here. Here's another high here that goes to right there. All right? This one goes right there. All right? There we got them. All right? So put them on. This is real hard. It's going to take me less than a minute to do this. All right. So come back over here. What do I now know? All right. Euro New Zealand is a great currency to trade, by the way. I make the turn. Here's what I know. Before it ever goes up, I know that there's a trade right here. Uh, 91 to 30. There's, <clears throat> there's 40 pips there, so I can trade that, but I can't trade that. I can trade that. I can trade that, and I don't want to miss that. So I already know what to trade. I can, I, at every point here, I'm able to assess risk and reward, all right? And there's no clicking out for five to eight pips, all right? So there's the first one, right to the target, okay? All right, and the second one goes to the second one on two candles, boom, right up to it. Now you can have the next one. I'm waiting for a pullback, all right? So they took it, and see, where did they go? Right to it, all right? But now I need a pullback. Come on, baby, give me a pullback. Looks like they're not gonna do it. They're gonna keep going, all right? So this, is, this becomes a two-part trade here, folks, because of the 6,900 even number. Trade one is here, trade two is here, all right? And so they may pull it back when they hit the 6,900. It's important that you know that, all right? So what do they do? 
there's a 6,900 holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, and boom, they went ahead and went, All right? There's my next target right up to it. Look at that. And here's the big one. I don't want to miss this one. And where'd they go? To the pip, to the pip. Let me ask you, do you think they don't know where those lines are? You just watched me do six charts. You watched me put those lines on from the past, and you watched as the market went uh, pip for pip right to them, right to them. Then that's what they do day in and day out. All right. So let's open this up for questions. If you got questions on it, that's kind of the presentation. And uh, I, the, my whole goal is to show you that there's a lot more to trading uh, in, in the market and you need to learn what the big boys do. That's what's going to make you a trader. It's not following somebody over at Forex Factory or did I get the right RBI setting or RSI setting. That's not going to help you a bit. What's going to help you is knowing why the market does what it does. So questions. Well, I must have been so good, but I answered every question along the way. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Anybody? Everybody good? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Uh, can I explain the HSI? HSI, Fred, is uh, simply a tool that measures Fibonacci. All right. It has the Fibonacci built into it. It finds historical support and resistance in Fibonacci with one click. Let me demonstrate it here. All right. I'm going to click on the bottom and it's going to automatic. All I got to do is find a bottom or top and it's going to find the uh, R1, R2, R3, R4. So I'm going to click it right there and tell them I'm a buyer. All right. now, now, let's notice how the market moves right to here, moves right to here, moves right to there. And there's a tall one there. Missed it by... Uh, you know, 20 pips probably right there. Uh, uh, how far do you go back? Uh, you go back uh, just to the last uh, uh, place where you find the market in that same price area. And it's a great question, John. So John asks, uh, how far do you go back? You go back to an area uh, as close as you can find it uh, that is in the same price area that you're in, right? right. So, uh, you know, wherever that is, and sometimes you've got to go back to 2008, sometimes you've got to go back to last week, right? You just remember that bankers are lazy just like us. They don't want to go digging into the archives if they can find it uh, two pages back. So that's it. RD, what do you got? Can you explain what? Can you explain uh, to the left? Yeah, okay. Uh, so you have a candle here. Another candle here. They only got wicks on them right here. And then you got one candle that sticks up here like this. All right. There's two to the left where the highs are lower than this one. And to the right is the same thing. Two candles to the right, whatever that may look like. All right. Their highs are lower than this. This is resistance. All right. That's not, none of this is, but this is, it takes five candles to make resistance on a 60 minute chart. By the way, you find them on a 60 minute chart or higher. All right. And by the way, anything below a 60 minute chart is, is cannon fodder. It's, it's, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't, it's nothing because a big boy doesn't look below a 60 minute chart. They, they uh, analyze on the, on the 240, 360 day chart and they uh, enter and exit on a 60 minute. So below a 60 minute chart, whatever you find down there is all yours, but it's nobody else's. Uh, uh, can a micro uh, and uh, Rodrigo says can a ma macroeconomic news totally change the current trend and how to be prepared? No, it can't. All right, now, they are blips on the screen, Rodrigo. It's a great question. All right, there are only really two uh, two major things that can do it: FOMC or uh, which is uh, in the United States or the equivalent in a country. All right, and uh, then non-farm payroll. Those two have the ability to do it, okay? Obviously, an election would have something to do. A geopolitical event could do that, you know? But uh, those, aren't, those aren't normal, okay? So an economic thing is a blip on the screen. There's usually a reaction to that. And the reason there's a reaction is because you have, you have to have a forecast and a previous. So that people look at that and say, okay, previously we did X, and we have forecasted to do 20,000 uh, 20, more jobs. Uh, let's use that as an example. We're forecasted to do 20,000 more jobs. So they price that in. 
right? Now, if, the, if it comes out with 50,000 jobs, they only price 20,000 in, so you see a big move to try to price it in quickly. What if they only come out with negative 10,000 uh, jobs? They will quickly price that in also. But then it's over with. It's over. What you're looking at, big, big news is FOMC, uh, or, uh, which is a, the Fed's deciding to raise rates or lower rates, or a non-farm payroll, which is, if you don't know it, non-farm payroll is the mother of all news uh, um, announcements. So, good question. Uh, how do you ch your chart show different things than the MT4 charts? Good question, Bill. One of the things that we're always looking for, first of all, we have lots of tools. We have all the tools you got on there. We got FIBs, we got FIB extensions, we got all those kind of tools. The big thing is this, we, we're looking at multiple time compressions. Let me run over here, just do a CAD yen here, okay? So let me pull this down here and take all this off. So this is the five minute chart. This is, these are three oscillators, okay? Uh, and we invented them. There's a 30 minute, a five, and a 240. Those are oscillators. These are Heikinashi charts, okay? And they tell a story. We don't trade any one of these things, but it's the preponderance of evidence. So in the 240 world, they're going down. In the 60-minute world, they're currently doing a, a pullback, but they were going down over here. They're in the pullback over here on the 10-minute world, okay? Over here in the big picture, the 240, they're going down. Here they're in the pullback, they're showing you the pullback, and this says we probably made the turn on the pullback already. You can't do this on MT4 because you can't show multiple time frames on the same ch chart. We're on the same chart here, and then when we get to this chart right here now we go and say okay now what is this depicting because these are actual candles right so we don't trade any of that that's information that says right now the preponderance of evidence says we're in a pullback we may be at the end of it and uh, we're looking to go to the downside all right so we can see over here already that we got this little channel working right here and you can see that we have a unsustainable move to the downside. So this pullback makes total sense. Why? Because they ran out of sellers. They got to go back up and find sellers, all right? Sellers don't sell at the bottom. Professional sellers sell at the top. So we now understand why they're pulling back, okay? And we also know where the next target is, which is right here. So there's our target right there. See that? And this is a two-part trade, part one and part two. You can't do that on MT4. Right? You can also not see momentum entering the market. You can't see it coming in. On MT4, that's the same candle as the one before. Right? So that's it. Uh, so there's a vast difference in what we can see here. And so what, ha what ends up happening is, remember, let's, just, no, let's, just, let's not just talk about it like in, uh, okay, that's a quick answer. Here's the deal. Your job is to, is the Forex is your business, right? And as a business owner, Whatever your business is, you have got to extract information. I don't care if you're a grocery store guy in Minnesota. When you decide to buy bananas, you're buying a, a perishable product, and those bananas are only going to last five days. And so if you buy a container of bananas, you've got to be able to sell them in five days. You have to, you have to take in business information. Uh, it's cold outside. People would really like to have some bananas. It's the winter. They'd really like to have some tropical fruit. They need some vitamin D because they can't go outside. All those factors go in and you finally decide I'm going to go buy some bananas. Okay. Well, that's the same thing here. We're just, we're just getting information from as many places we can so that we can make a, a good business decision. All right. So traders who never learn the why of the market, why is the market doing what it's doing right now? Never will le learn to trade. They'll never get it. Okay. So, uh, hopefully that answered your question. It's a great question. Uh, Okay, Anzi, uh, thanks for being here. It's 3.30 in the morning there. I'm really glad you're there. Uh, we, it is recorded, Anzi, so you will get a copy of the recording or a, a link to where it is, okay? Uh, yes, we are adding, uh, we're looking at adding the cryptocurrencies on it. Same thing works on it, you know, same stuff we do here. You know, if you didn't know this was a, uh, a Bitcoin, all right, you look at it and go, wow, I can see what they're doing here. Look at the money coming in. Look at the money coming in. See, the, see how it's coming in? You can see the pullbacks clearly where they're going to pull it back. I can see that they're doing uh, ABC pullbacks before they go again. You see that? I can see polls that they're doing here. I can see money coming in, money coming in, money coming in, lots of money coming in. Of course, we know Bitcoin um, almost put in a high today, a 9,700, uh, 96.46 is what it did. No, it didn't, 97.86, almost hit 9,800. So there you go. Uh, uh, 
Okay. Uh, so there we go. Uh, okay, Pablo said, please select to all panelists and attendees when you ask your question so everybody can see your question. I'll try to repeat them, but uh, you know, sometimes I don't do a real good job on that. So uh, would you please, uh, Fred asked, would you please talk about trades and sizes and how you divide? Great question, uh, Fred. Awesome question. All right. So uh, the way we do that is we, uh, we, take, uh, we, we identify what our account is and we never risk more than 2%. All right. Never risk 2%. So let me give you an, an easy example with easy math. Okay. Let's say that our account size at 2% allowed us to trade $100. We could risk $100 at any time. Well, you can tell, you know what that would be. That would be three minis, right? With a, a 33 pip stop. Okay. So that's how, that's what it would be. And okay. So what we do is our first trade, the first trade, because we only trade in a wide open space and we have to press our winners without exception. Our first trade into the market is only one third of our lots, but I have a hundred dollars to trade. All right. Or a hundred pips. And my first stop would be a hundred pips. All right. Now I will never let this currency go back a hundred pips, but I'm not going to get stopped out for a little pull pullback. Okay. But because I only have one third of my risk of my money at risk, I have to find a place to get two thirds of it in. All right. So there, all right. So, um, somewhere along the route from this target to this target, I got to find two thirds of the way in here. All right. So uh, it's real easy for them to show you that here's the ABC correction right there. So where have my two thirds go in right there? For that okay now when the second second uh, set goes in I have to reduce my risk because I can never trade more than a hundred dollars so the, the second trade goes in I have two trades with only 50 per 50 pip stops when the third one goes in I only have 33 pip stops okay but the good news is by the time the third one goes in trade one and two are in profit so I never really have to worry about trade three. And if I'm in a big area and I'm adding five, six, seven, eight trades on, after the third trade, I can't lose. That's it. So it's very, very simple, right? And uh, I don't get stopped out. Uh, I never let it go back 100 pips. If I see it's not working, it's my job to go over there and say, man, this isn't working. I'm out of here. I'm going to take it out for 42 pips. Well, you take a 42 pip loss, but only on one third of your lots. So reality, that's the same thing as trading as losing only 12 pips on a regular trade that you would have. Now, once I get the trade to break even, I can put another 2% at risk. So I may have 2%, 2%, and 2% on multiple trades. You know, I might have three different trades on, and as long as they're all break even or better, I can put my 2% at risk again. Right? Because I, as long as I'm break even or above, I can still put another 2% at risk. So that's how it's done. We actually have a whole video on how to do stop losses on our website. It's uh, well worth learning how to do that. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, Anzi says, uh, uh, how can you tell a pullback from a reversal? Well, the market, uh, a reversal only happens uh, at uh, known places, Andre. Once you understand the structure of the market, one, that's a big thing. It takes a while to learn the structure. But once you understand the structure of the market, then you know where the reversal is going to occur. And you also, uh, you're also given a telltale sign by, the, the, by divergence. Divergence tells you where the reversal is going to happen. It will also tell you where the pullback is going to happen. But, uh, and they're always at known spots. They don't trade. They don't stop in the middle of nowhere. All the candles stopped here in the middle of nowhere and turn. Okay? That's not how it works, okay? All right, they turn here because everybody knows what to do, all right? So you can see clearly here, all right, just using this chart right here, that when they, when they took off to here, this was the target. So when they did an ABC, that told everybody we're going to the target. So when they took off to here, all right, where is the pullback going to occur? Right here. Why is it going to occur here? Because that was the target. This is an unsustainable trend which has to be pulled back. All right. All unsustainable moves are, are pulled back or they put a pull in. Right. It's the easiest, easiest trade to learn. And the very first trade you learn when you're a proact trader is how to trade the poll. All right. Polls are very, very simple. They occur all the time. They're highly, uh, highly profitable. We have traders who have doubled and tripled their accounts just trading polls. Yeah, but they're boring, man. They are boring. I will give you that. But they make money because they have a high probability of fulfilling whatever you uh, uh, whatever it is going into the poll is what it's going to do out another poll all right whatever it does into the poll is what it's going to do out all right another poll here all right 
Whatever it did going in the pole is what it's going to do out. See that? There are three poles right there. Gee, it's so boring. But I made three poles, and I started down here at 101, 1,000, and I finished up here at 1,900. There's 900 pips right there, folks, with three poles. What will happen to the most traders? Most traders will take five to eight pips out of there because they won't trade to the target because they don't know where it is. They have no clue where the target is. And since they don't know where the target is, you won't trade to it. Uh, studies have shown that unless you have the target on your charts, you will not stay in to trade it. Right? Because every pullback freaks you out, every reversal, every, uh, every retracement freaks you out. The market retraces 99% of the time, 99% of the time. And the big, the big pullbacks are done because they're trying to put a wave structure into the market because once they have a wave structure in, every professional trader knows exactly what to do. Let me see if I can find one here real quickly for you. Well, of course, the dollar yen is doing one, okay? So uh, we'll just, we're in a third wave here. Yeah, so here's wave one, here's wave two, all right? That sets, the, that sets the trend right there, you see that? That sets the angle, 10 to four. See that? That's a, that's a sustainable trend right there, but the moves inside it are not sustainable, okay? So this is a one, a two. We're in a three wave right now. This is a three wave. Down in here, we're gonna get a four wave. The reversal here makes total sense for an A, B, C. Why would they do an A, B, C here? Because they wanna do a fifth wave to the downside. That's structure. All right, so they'll do an ABC here. It'll be a big one, not a small one like this. It'll be a big one, and we, are, we already know about it. We already know where it is, all right? And don't forget, we're already in these trades with multiple trades to the downside. We've already discussed today that when we get this in, we see the bounce, what we're going to do is we're going to peel off a bunch of our lots, scale out, leave the, the first one in, is going to stay in up here. We'll move our stop back up into the here. We'll never get stopped out on it, all right? And we'll let it ride back up against us, and when we make the turn, We'll do it again, all right? So it's, it's all about understanding structure. You can't learn structure, in, and first of all, you can't learn it in one night. And by the way, you can't, learn, you can't learn to trade in three weeks, all right? So most traders think, I'm gonna learn to trade in three weeks. It's virtually, it's impossible. Get it out of your head. Does not work, okay? You can't learn to trade that. Uh, yeah, this, it, it is all being recorded, Fred, so we'll have it available to everybody. Pablo will, Pablo will send it out to everybody as soon as we get it done. It has to be rendered and all that, so. Uh, so, yeah, most people will look at the first time they look at this chart and they go, man, there's too many lines on there. I'm not going to get it. But the reality is if you put the lines on, you know exactly what they are. Right? You'll know exactly why that line is there and why they stopped here. You'll know why they stopped here. See that? So there you go. So there's a, tr there's a currency that's trending. Where will the reversals come? At the one, two, three, four, and five. Reversal, 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 and reversal. That's called Elliott Wave, right? And because bankers are technical traders, right? Bankers trade Elliott Wave, right? Now, you don't need to become an Elliott Waver. In fact, in order to become a good Elliott Waver, it's going to take you two years or better to become a good Elliott Waver. So you might want to give that idea out. But you've got to know about Elliott Wave because you have to understand structure, right? And what most traders do is they go in the market and they don't understand structure. And so therefore, they're trading on a guess. I think it's going down, I think it's going up. And guess what happens? You lose on those trades, or most of them. The problem is you win on just enough of them to keep you in the game, and the broker loves that, right? Okay, another question. Uh, Andrew, uh, Fast Tracker spent a lot of time Monday through Thursday in market analysis. Uh, looking at structure and look for several secret trades that only Fast Trackers know to limit our risk even more. Yeah. Uh, for instance, fast trackers, we, we didn't talk about fibs tonight, well, just a little bit, but uh, fast trackers trade fibs 10 different ways. 10 ways they have to trade fibs. Most traders know one or maybe two if they're lucky. We, we, we trade them 10 different ways. Right? Yeah, it's all about understanding that the market is, is complex. It's not complicated. Anybody can learn to trade. It's my opinion that anybody with average intelligence can learn to trade. Why? Because there is no rocket science here. Right? I'm not a very good math guy, but I can trade. Right? And the engineers in here, they eat this math up. Are you telling me they're math guys? Yeah, that's what they're, oh man, give it to me. I want to trade them, those guys because I understand math. And those guys have an, uh, have, have an edge in the math area. They also have a, a problem, okay? And the fact that because they're a math guy, an engineering type, they have to have it. Everything has to say, yes, we're going. And you'll never get that. You'll never get that, right? 
So if the market always did what it always does, you couldn't get your garbage picked up tomorrow. Why? Because your garbage man would be a Forex trader, right? Because it doesn't do it all the time. That's where the problem is, right? So you have to understand the why of the market. We have three questions that we ask every day. What are they doing? What are the big boys doing today and why? And once we figure that out, then we know what probability is, okay? Then where is the next probable move? We don't deal with possibility. Possibility is it's going up, it's going down, it's going sideways. We don't care about that. What we want to know is based on the structure of the market, what is the next probable move? And are we at a wide open space where the big boys will trade it? Because if we're not in a wide open space, they'll keep, they're going to keep going sideways until they get a wide open space. Because they can't put 20,000 lots at risk for five pips. They got to have an area of at least 55 pips, if not more. And people say, well, why is it 55 pips? Well, here's the deal. Because of the Fibonacci structure, uh, sequence, it's 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, and 377. We don't care about the rest of them. Right? That's exactly what happens right there. These are the lines you see here. Or we call them T30s. Why do we have them on here? Because of that Fib right there. 34 pips, all right? Then the white dot, when the white dot comes in, they're going 55 pips, all right? How do we know that? Because that's a Fibonacci sequence. What do most currencies do, the majors do? 90 pips a day, all right? What do the, uh, the bigger ones do? 144 to 150 pips a day. What are the really big ones? Pound New Zealand do a day? 230, 250 pips a day. That's called the ATR, all right? What are they doing? They're running the math. They do the math. You gotta learn the math. You don't learn the math? You're going to lose. It's just that simple because you don't know the why of the market. You don't know when not to take a trade. Why shouldn't I take a trade? Well, it did its ATR today. Oh, really? Yeah, well, we watch the ATR every day. We pull it up for you. Every day we, we pull it out and we know what every currency that we trade is going to do today. All right. So hold on a minute. I'll pull it up. This is the little thing we do in the morning. Before we open, here are the average two ranges for 19 pairs. So you can see the euro dollar is a dog. Everybody trades the euro dollar, does 68 pips a day. That's three major, that's three markets. All right, so what is it actually moving? 20 pips a session. That's what it's doing. A lousy 20 pips a session gets you 60. There's only three major sessions, okay? Notice the pound dollar is doing 89 pips right on the fib, okay? 60 pips, 72, 49 pips, 88. 89. What's that? That's a number 55, 89. Okay. The other number, they're all right in here. 55 pips. You see that? Then we up under the bigger hoods, 144. Look where we are right in here. See that? There you go. All right. And of course, in, in, in uh, normal trending moves, like in a, in a winter time, you'll see they'll jump up to 176, 200 pips a day. All right. Certain currencies. You, you got This is information you have to know. This is math. This is what this currency does day in and day out. If you don't know that, you know that uh, during the London session, it, tra it traded for 55 pips, and, and you, op you open up in the New York session, and you come in in the New York session, and uh, all of a sudden it looks like a perfect trade. What, what, what do you got? You got 18 pips left. That's all you got. 18 lousy pips, and you make a trade, and the market can't do it because it's done its ATR. So what's it got to do? It's got to go back up and find sellers, or it's got to go back down and find buyers. You get stopped out, and you go, the broker stopped me out. No, you didn't what the, know what the ATR was. You traded at the last of the move as opposed to the beginning of the move. All right? You take this down to a one-minute chart, I mean a 10-minute chart, so you can see the 55 pips. 55 pips we only care about when we have uh, when it's in session. In between sessions, we don't care about them, okay? So uh, here's one breaking this fib right here. See, it? this one's breaking the fib. Let's mark it, all right? So money came in to make that happen. So we'll pop a fit, put it right on there, 55 pips. See, it's already pre-programmed for that, and we're going to here. There it is. See that? Bam. Where did we go? We went to there, all right? Now, everybody who saw this, our pro act, all right, who saw this trade, took the trade here and saw them do a poll, didn't bail on the trade. Why? Because they know that's where they're trying to go. And now they have even more reason because this is how we got into the poll. This is how we're coming out of the poll. See that? It's all about understanding the why. That's not complicated. That's not. But it's a piece of the puzzle. There are hundreds of pieces of the puzzle that you have to learn. Yeah, Mike's got it. You got to learn the why of the market. Why are they doing that? 
Why did they do this ABC? Because they wanted to continue the move. Why did they do this ABC? Because they wanted to continue the move. Why did they do this poll? Because they wanted to continue the move. There's only four reversal patterns in the market. You got to learn them. All right? See, all this is what has to be learned, and you can't learn it. You cannot learn it by buying some ebook or downloading a CD or something. You can get good information out of that stuff, but you can't learn it that way. You have to learn it in the market. You have to spend hours upon hours. The rule of thumb is for every hour you spend live in the market, you need to spend three hours in the past paper trading the market. Three for one, really. So if I'm in the market tomorrow with you guys for two hours in the New York session tomorrow, that means that I'm supposed to spend six hours tomorrow in the past. That's correct. Well, yeah, I can't do that. I got a JLB. That's right. And so you're constantly falling back. That's why you've got to, you have to prioritize. And instead of trying to learn all the stuff, you learn one thing, one trade on one currency. And when you get that done, you move to the next currency and you don't try to do everything. So, uh, okay. What else? We got another question here. We've been going, we're going to close it in six minutes because it's an hour and a half. That's about all that anybody can take for folks when they're watching a the video. So all right, good, John. Thank you. John says, thank you very much. Starting to make sense. Good night all. Good night to you too, John. So, uh, we'll take one more question. If not, we'll close this up. Okay, looks like no more questions. So let me pull this up real quick here. All right, so uh, here's the deal. All right, we open up our house. We have an open house going right now. It starts tomorrow, right? And you can come in and watch our traders make hundreds and hundreds of pips. I'm going to take this. Uh, let me hold on just a minute. Let me. Uh, what's going on here? Let me uh, grab this link for you. All right, so if you want to, if you want to join us, cost you nothing. Come join us for ten days. I'll put this into the uh, chart right in here, and uh, 